Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, we're going to argue about tacos with Emma Bastian. Emma, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. You're so welcome. Please excuse the fact that I'm eating pizza. My team lead made a good point that why am I not eating tacos? And let me tell you, that's because they don't have Taco Bell in this country, and I refuse to eat anything else. Oh, this it's going to be so easy to win this debate because it's just so obviously wrong that Taco Bell is better than more or less any other taco. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I'm super excited to have you on the show. You've been on before, but uh, I, I feel like it's been a it's been a minute. So I am really, really happy to have you back. Uh, but. For those of us, for those of you who don't know, Emma and I actually used to work together, but way back in the day, uh, we both worked at IBM. Um, so, yeah, Emma, do you want to give a little bit of a like a background and a, a story? Story time, mukbang. Um, yeah, for <laughs> sure. So, Jason believed in me when I was a baby developer. Um, I I started at IBM in 2015, and I think you and I met in 2016, late 2016, and I remember you believed in my mentorship. Like I was starting to do like an executive mentorship program at IBM and Jason was one of like the four people who believed in me. And I remember sitting there asking him, how do you get to speak at conferences? It's so cool. You get to travel the world. I want to do that. And you inspired me. And now what? The last time we talked, I was living in Germany. Now I'm in Sweden. Mm -hmm. New country, new me. That's what I'm saying. No kidding. That's like the the spark notes edition of the how we met. (laughs) No, but you're you're just absolutely killing it right now um you know you're you're at spotify now um you are living in your is is this your your second or third foreign country that you've lived in now um well if you can't study abroad it would be three because i studied in london lived in germany for three years almost and then lived in sweden for four and a half months nice nice uh of the three which is your favorite sweden <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Germany. I just don't, I didn't love the city that I was in. It was kind of boring. No mm, offense. mm. No, I get it. I like, I, you know, as someone who has traveled a lot, I, I have found that there are cities that feel like home and there are cities that feel like the kind of place that you just don't, you never really settle in. Right. And, and I actually, I felt that way about Berlin and I was really surprised. I thought Berlin was going to be like home. I thought I was going to get there and be like, this is where I belong. And it, it just did not feel that way for me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I like is it is Lynetta, is that a is that an Austin place? Okay. No. So my coworkers are in the chat right now, quite a few, and oh. they are asking me, why didn't you order from Lynetta? Which is possibly the best, most authentic Mexican tacos you can get here. And they're okay. really good. But I told them if I were to have <laughs> ordered that tonight, which I I thought about you would have won by default and I am stubborn. So (laughs) okay. So, uh, so this all kind of stemmed from an argument where you, you posted on Twitter that, uh, Taco Bell was the best taco and I couldn't let that stand. So we argued until we decided that this had to actually get settled. And so today we've decided that we are going to build an app to settle this debate and chat. We're going to need your help to settle this because this is going to rely on audience participation. We need votes. Um, So the plan that we have is we're going to build a polling app. And this is actually going to be kind of inspired by an app that uh, Sarah Drasner built called Is This a Sandwich, which is a uh, a click through poll. And at the end, you get a score. But what we want to do that kind of remixes this is we're going to actually aggregate these scores and show uh, a a winner. Right. So this is our plan. Neither one of us does a ton with data, so we may or may not get there. We're going to do our best. You might just get to the create React app part and say, screw it, we're done. (laughs) Yeah, there's a decent chance that this is just going to devolve into like more or less a a rap battle where we'll just talk about tacos at each other. Um, (laughs) On that note, let's uh, let's switch over into pair programming mode and we'll do a quick shout out. If you're not already following Emma, uh, you should go and do that. It is a good time. Emma is full of good insights and good jokes and bad takes on tacos. Um, And if you're not already following Jason, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. (laughs) 
for the algorithm. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, let's also uh, make sure that we give a shout out to our sponsor. So we have live captioning being done by Vanessa right now. Thank you so much for being with us. That is over at lwj.dev slash live, and you can see those captions here. That's made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, Hasura, Fauna, and Auth0, who all generously chipped in to make this show more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of Hasura today, in fact, to do our, our voting. Um, so, if we want to get started, here's, here's the way I see this going. Um, you, you're a React Pro, so you're going you're gonna to lead building our, oh, our UI. Oh, that's dangerous. Well, let's do it. <laughs> and so we we did uh, we we need to get some images. the The vision that we have is that you're going to look at a picture of a taco, and then you're going to answer, "Is this a taco?" or like, "Is this the best taco?" Yes or no. Um, and th this is not going to be like a particularly scientifically accurate poll. This is really you're going to watch this show. You're going to decide whether you want to troll me or troll Emma, and then you're going to take this quiz to to complete that goal. Um, but so what we did is we're going to go over to Unsplash and grab some taco images. And oh, then... this is this is not safe for work. <laughs> okay, so here's what we got. We've got, um, here's our taco photos. So we got some Taco Bell photos and, and we I couldn't find like a, here's a Taco Bell press kit. So I figured that they wouldn't ah. be upset if these were like ads. Um, ah. so that Taco Bell gets a lot of press. Please don't sue me, Taco Bell. I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I am maybe, uh, besmirching your good name, but Emma's all for it. <laughs> so this is 50% good press. Um, now, so we've got these, these four Taco Bell images, and then we're going to grab four non-Taco Bell images. So let's see, let's see, let's look at how about... This one, and we're using Unsplash because we, again, we want to make sure that, uh, first of all, that the creators get credit, and second of all, I don't want this episode to get taken down later, so let's grab, let's see, here's another good looking one, that looks like Al Pastor, I'm all about that. Al Pastor is the best. I was trying Thanks. to think of a fun pun, but I couldn't, so I just gave up. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the effort, the effort is there. <laughs> Um, let's you know, see. the first time I had an Al Pastor taco was I had just joined IBM. It was like our first day of work and we went out, the spectrum control team and I, we, they were like, okay guys, we're going to get the best tacos. And we roll up to a gas station in the middle of Austin. Yes. Off a highway. Yes. yes. And it was, it was not as good as Taco Bell, but I will give it like a <laughs> nine, nine out of 10. Okay. So I'm going to download these. And we are going to uh, we're going to work on these. So just a quick shout out to the creators. Thank you, Jordan Nix, Fidel Fernando, Christian Tabori, and Jeswin Thomas for uh, putting your photos on on Unsplash. That is very much appreciated. And now that I have these, I'm going to put them into this uh, this no nope, not that this directory here. Oh, I really don't like that it's. Oh man, why is that not organized? Be organized. Okay. I hate that so much. It's killing me. Okay. <laughs> so um, so we've got these four images. I feel like we probably want to process these a bit because they are very, very large. So I'm going to use one of my favorite tools for that, which is called squoosh.app. That seems like an app that you would have made, just the name of it. <laughs> this is a, I think it was the Chrome DevRel team. I think uh, Jake Archibald was was the lead on this one. Um, also, it looks like it got an update. That's really nice looking. Look at that. That is, that's beautiful. Okay, so what we should be able to do with this then is any one of these we can drag in and then we can resize it. So we don't oh. need these to be huge. So let's make these like 800 pixels wide. Um, and then I'm going to compress it and look, we are going to get an 88% savings on these files, which is unbelievable. So there's one, let's get the next one. I always one. have to go, I always do this through Figma and it's such a pain in the ass, pain, it, pain in the butt. It really is. I mean, <laughs> like it's really, really nice to be able to just come here for, for this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, another one, we're going to get an 88% savings. And like you can see, um, we resized it so you can see the quality difference here. 
But if we go down to Ooh. the size that it's going to be at, like around 800 pixels, you can barely tell the difference. And this this is literally 12% of the size it used to be. Um, so that's a that's a really, really important tip if you are not. Uh, did I just do the Fidel Fernando one twice? Oh, I'm such a doofus. OK, the size does matter, but resolution. It's fine. Yeah, so all right, 800. Let it be 75 again. All right. Is it just it's it's continually doing the same one. I'm going to reload because I think maybe I the Fidel Fernando one is in there. I want the Jesuit Thomas. That's the hardest thing is keeping your assets organized, I swear. It really is like You good? You good? 98% savings on this one. Holy buckets. I feel like we're, you know that show Extreme Cheapskates? That's us, but with image compression. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. And let's take this one down. I feel like we need some copyright free, like, music in the background. I know. Like I, I've thought about that. The um, but the, the problem with the, the music is that when we're talking and there's music and then people play sound effects, the show can get really like oh, yeah. overstimulating. Um, um, it's a shame I don't have my trumpet. We could have played some mariachi. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, chat. Ninety nine percent savings on that one. Okay. So now that we've got these, I'm going to take these ones out, these giant files. And instead, we're going to drop these ones back in. I think this is the one that doesn't have, yep. OK, so now we've got these, these images, and they're significantly smaller. Um, so this is going to be way easier to manage. And so with that, we can start a new site. So you were thinking uh, create React app, right? Yes, please. OK, so let's uh, NPX, or wait, is, is it NPM create it React I app? I thought it was NPX. I don't know. We're going to find out. Ooh, let's try it. Let's see what happens. And then we're going to call this one. Um, we need to talk about This is the longest your folder choices. Name. This is the best repo I'll ever create. And it's not a mono repo, so I never have to type it again. It's just here to make me smile. OK, so we are installing everything that we need. And hopefully, this won't take very long. I got the good internet so that we didn't have to you know, really spend any time on this. I swear my cats are going to be unruly during this. And it's just because they know when mom is live streaming. <laughs> they, they lie in wait. <laughs> I feel like we should make awkward elevator conversation. Do you have any fun questions? Yeah, where are you at, chat? Questions. Yeah, chat. Ask us anything. Oh, God. You're going to regret that. <laughs> How's the weather? Dark. Yeah, how much sunshine have you had this month? I don't want to talk about it. I don't think I've actually <laughs> seen the sun in four years, but it just gets like light cloudy out. Yeah, corn or flour tortilla? That's a great question. If I'm going to have a quesadilla, it has to be flour because that cheese needs to melt into it. But if it's like a, an al pastor, I think those are corn, no? I think. But also, can we talk about breakfast tacos? Because there is nothing better than a potato, egg, and cheese. Ooh, yeah. So this is going to be something that maybe only the folks who've, who've been to Austin are going to appreciate. Because I think that breakfast tacos outside of Texas are just garbage. Like I, I got a breakfast taco in Portland. We can and agree I was on so, that. I was so sad. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, Nikki, okay, so for for anyone who's not familiar with tacos, this is this uh, it, you know it's a it's a Mexican dish, uh, especially in Europe, they're hard to find. A a taco is um, not necessarily the hard shell. In fact, traditionally they don't have a hard shell. Um, but 
you can take a, a tortilla that's usually about yay big, about, you know, a little, little smaller than your face. And um, you would serve that with some kind of meat or grilled vegetables and then uh, mixed toppings. Usually like so an al pastor taco, for example, is um, is al pastor uh, like meat, which is what they usually do, like beef it's al pastor, pork? right? Pork al pastor. No, it's is it? pork and it's marinated, I believe. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, so it's it's marinated pork and then they'll put like some fresh onions, some cilantro, a little bit of lime juice. It's it's really delicious. Um, and that would be served on a soft shell tortilla, but then, uh, hard shell tacos are like flash fried tortillas. Um, and then I think that Americans like really got into that because we like handheld food. <laughs> well, okay. But let me tell you about the best one, which is called a gordita crunch. And that is a hard shell filled with all the stuff. And then you, you wrap it in a soft flour tortilla that has a layer of cheese holding it together and you get all the textures. And that is why I love Taco Bell. Oh, just okay. Well, the chat the chat is very into this. Um, so, <laughs> I think you're all wrong, but um, the yes. Yeah, so the <laughs> oh, chat, you're killing me. You're killing me right now. Okay, so um, oh, Jimena's got the got the info. Al pastor is the adobo mix of chiles as marinade for the meat and cooked on a trompo um the which is like when you um you know the cone of meat that you would see in like a, a donor kebab shop or or yeah. like yeah it's it's that it's like a vertical kind of rotisserie grill um so. yes oh i love those so now that we've got this i'm actually why? Going... no why is why is that on the right side are you are you I'll show you. I'll show you why. Watch, this is why. It's so no. that when I open this, and then I hide my sidebar, my code doesn't jump around. I learned this from Nikki in the chat, and it is. It's. I know. I know that it's upsetting at first, but it's it's game changer. I cannot proceed with this live stream. <laughs> oh, people are so upset. Okay, we're all, I mean, we're all making choices that some of us don't agree with today. So we're just going to, you know, we're going to disagree and commit here, I think. So, um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to probably just define our list of, of tacos, right? So mm -hmm. we can start with like tacos and that can be an array. And then each one is going to need, um, we can call it like, source that'll be the the path to the image it's going to need alt text um do we want to give them names or anything we should probably give them an id of some sort which can uh, be like a number names because i think we'll run out of names to give them that's true like, taco like saucy taco. boy one or taco. <laughs> <laughs> big boy two I don't know um, okay, so then if we've got these, I can take all of these images, I'm just going to copy them. And do you know how static images work in Create React App? That's a no for me. <laughs> um, I think you just import them. You just and import then, them? Yeah, like uh, import taco from, and then the, the path, the relative path, and then... What? I, th I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not a programmer. <laughs> I mean, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to put, oh, we need to call this images and then I'll put all these photos in here. Is that going to work for me? It's not going to work for me, which means I got to drag them in. That's fine. So let's take all of these. We'll put them into this images folder. Okay. Beautiful. Then, Doritos Locos. <laughs> Oh, that's not gonna work. Dang, I was hoping it would get. Let me copy the source. You can copy the path, though. How do you copy? Copy, copy the path. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we'll be able to go from app into there, and we can say a uh, Taco Bell cheesy double decker taco. Okay, so that's one, and then we can duplicate this out so the next one we need is the 
cheesy thing, whatever this is. Okay, these are going to be, I'm sorry, these are not going to be like the most helpful um, alt text because I don't want to spend the whole episode trying to configure this object. Uh, so we will do our best. In a production app, we would take more time on this. And each of these needs fabulous a unique fatty. T Bor wants us to name one of them fabulous fatty. <laughs> I mean, the alliteration is there, but I. <laughs> and what was the last one? Ta just Taco Bell tacos. Sounds good. Okay. I'm not sure if it'll work like this. Like, I don't know if we actually need to import them and set the source to the import, oh, but we'll find out. We yeah, might have to. Yeah, that's a good, good point. Good but point. But I think that this is worth a shot. Name one cheesy Chester. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like we're naming like children, and <laughs> I it don't does know. Feel, it does feel a little bit like that. Um, I feel like if we named a taco cheesy Chester, it would get bullied though. The other tacos oh. would make fun of it. Aww. So this this is gonna go poorly, I think. But we can. Yeah, I'm if, wondering if we should like test. like validate our assumption before we just yeah, keep making. You're probably right. Okay, so let's let's see if we can get these to show on screen. Um, so I guess we can just do like a. All right, so let's do like a main, and then inside we can do um, tacos.map. And why don't we get like a image, and it'll need a key, which we can use the ID. Not like that, it doesn't. And yeah. then, is this going to work? Taco source? Oh, no. Are you using Dink Mono as your font? Operator Mono. Ooh. Okay, so that's running, Mono so we should things. see an no. immediate explosion. No! Exactly. Yeah, so I... I oh, wait, what does oh. that mean? Did it, like, not... Didn't print oh. on even. Hold on, it says map needs a return. Oh, I'm a doofus. <laughs> I did this the other day! This is every time. Every single time. Now what? It's probably not. Yeah. No. Wait, unexpected, unexpected token. Semicolon, that's why. I'm surprised that ESLint didn't like, it, just remove it. It probably did. Weird. Okay, so okay, you, so you were right. Those don't work. Okay, so. <laughs> but what we can do is set them to variables, and then instead of source as your key, you can set it to like component or image, and then still do the math. So, so hold on. So if I do like cheesy Chester here, yeah, and we're gonna import so that yeah. from here, yeah. Then is that the source, or do I just like yeah. throw this in I mean, as a? No, I think it's it's your source. I'm pretty sure. Uh oh. Well, I like I how I told you I was pretty sure, and then you still were like, you know what? I'm gonna try it anyway. And then <laughs> I, I like to see what happens. So what did it? What does know, it even say? <laughs> oh, okay. So you you were absolutely right. It just brought in the the path, and then I I was trying to create that path as a component. So <laughs> um, people are saying that the images should be in the public folder as well. Oh, look at this public folder that we could have used. Okay. No so wait, then does that? So if that's the case, then we could just do this. Uh, potentially, yeah. Let's try it. Let's try it with just one. Oh, let me take my cheesy Chester out of here. Sorry, Chester, you gotta go. I appreciate go. I appreciate T Ward telling you to listen to me. I'm listening. I am listening. No, I know. I'm kidding. Oh, okay, so oh, whoa! I think wait, it, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Why did that just work for all of them though? Probably because we moved it into the public folder. Oh, and it's re and it's relative. Um, okay, yeah. so we just okay. Okay, so that's good. The 
And so the other way that we could have done this would have been yes. to uh, to import those app the, or to import those images directly, and then we could have put yes. them as the source. But this this is this feels more cor I like correct, it. I guess. Yeah, it's less less clutter at the top. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I do like not having to import images as as JavaScript dependencies. That feels a little weird. So let's get the rest of these in here. We've got the Jeswin. No, we got Fidel. So let's get Jeswin and drop the public out. Let's get Jordan. I love this relative path. This is new to me. It's nice, right? It's wonderful. Okay. All right, and last one, Christian. Ladies, I'm working. <laughs> Your cats? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like the Daytona 500 in here. <laughs> okay, so these are not Taco Bell tacos. I'm so sorry for those alt descriptions. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm sticking with them only because I I want to make sure that we get a chance to finish and we have limited time. Um, so now can you stop? Sorry. <laughs> so we have that, and then we've got our app CSS. So let's take this app CSS and change. I don't want it to be 100 v height. So let's get rid of that, and instead we'll add some like padding of I don't know three. Um, that seems a little yes. That's a little little easier to to deal with. Maybe even mm -hmm. a little bit shorter. Good. Okay. So then we need like a a container for our images. Um. Do you have opinions on this? How would uh, what what's your preferred way right now for for doing this sort I mean, of a layout? I'm thinking it's just going to be, well, how are you going to display them? Are you going to display them in a grid or are you going to display them one by one? Ooh, we should display them one by one. That is, that yeah. is correct. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk through how we want to do that then. Um, so if we want to display them one by one, we've got them in an array. Just have a piece of, like have a hook that says like active taco and okay. set it to the ID of the current. Okay. So we can import use state from react and then down here we'll create active taco <laughs> set active taco this i i'm pretty sure that my favorite uh my favorite variable names are going to come out of this episode yeah. <laughs> also i'm realizing i made a huge mistake uh, yeah. by yeah. not zero indexing these yeah But then again, maybe I also just want to. I mean, yeah, just move that up to the top if you're going to get upset about the fact that it starts down there. <laughs> I am going to get upset. <laughs> you know me well. <laughs> I mean, I was going to be upset too, but I wasn't going to like cancel the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was just going to stop. Like, we're done. Get out of here. Jason um, Winsdorf is canceled due to his choice in indexing. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got um, instead of showing this, we can we can start by doing like a um, we would need maybe like a div with a class of like current vote class name of like current vote I think, and then inside of this we need the image. Um, a form, and under the form we need a like yes, no, and like a question heading. You know what I'm thinking? Instead of saving the index as the active taco, let's save the whole object. It's going to be a lot easier to manipulate, I think. Oh, okay. So we'll go tacos zero. That'll we'll just start there. Yeah. Okay, that works. I think, right? Or maybe. Oh yeah, because then we can just do like active taco dot yes, source I think that's and, and all that. Better. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So then um, to start, we can we can go back to our image. We'll do a source of active taco 
dot source alt mm -hmm. active taco dot alt and we can do we'll do classes rel or styling relative to this container I think so then we need um, a form and that form will probably now nah, we'll just we'll we'll just figure that out later um, so to start, we need like a, a question. Is this the most delicious taco? And then we need, okay, should we do this as a, as buttons, as a radio? I buttons think it are... needs to be a range of like one to five, like a slider. Oh, okay. How? Oops. Because then we can see which ones have the highest overall rating. Because the thing, yeah, if you say, is this the most delicious? It's like, well, they don't know. They might not have seen the other ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I get what you're saying. So uh, we will label this with an HTML4 for um, amount. And we'll say, choose one for not delicious. Garbage. <laughs> choose five yes. for- Choose one for garbage. <laughs> <laughs> choose five, five for Michelin four. star. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's going to give Taco Bell a Michelin star, though. What about I would die for this taco? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then input type range and the min. Let's see if I, I like can that do you this. know this from. Like, I would have to look this up. Max, I, I just did one of these with um, with Lindsay Kopach a little oh, while yeah. ago, and we we styled this up. So I'm trying to remember what she taught me. Uh, min max, and then I think the step will default to one. So let's find out. What does this look like? Nope, I broke it already. Step no, equals didn't. zero comma one. How delicious! Boop 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 boop. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's great. That is Beautiful. wonderful. Why are there no labels on it, though? What do you mean? Like, there are no, like, indexing numbers. Is that not the default by, like, HTML inputs? It looks like it is, yeah. So so maybe, actually, what we should do is um, do, like, a mm -hmm. const uh, tastiness. Oh, my God, I love it. And we'll... we'll in, uh, we'll start it at the middle. So we'll say we'll say we'll start at three, and then you can choose which direction you want to go. And so we will set the value. Wait, you can set list equal to tick marks list. as an attribute. And like, then list equals tick marks. Yeah. And then what you can do? Like oh my god, this is so cool. Yes. Um, do I have, I'm going to send you this in the chat, in our Zoom chat, because you need to go to this page and scroll down. This is super cool. Didn't know this existed, but basically you can set, you have a data list element. You set it to the ID of the list that we, the list attribute, and then you can set different options, different steps with different labels so that it's fully accessible. So yeah, if you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see the example List with tick marks. keep going, keep tick going. Marks. Oh, it's pretty far oh. down. Yeah, yeah where, this one here. Oh, here? right there. You, know, you just passed it. No, uh, go up again. There, here, this here. Okay. Oh, that. nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Okay, so uh, wait. So to do that, we need to input type range list tick. Oh, so tick marks is the ID. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Okay. So that, that makes sense. Um, so then we're going to, oh, I love that. So I guess we can probably put it in the, in the thing. Let's do a data list ID of tick marks. And then we're going to get an option value one. Okay. I just want to also call this out because Craig made a good point, but currently no browser fully supports these features, but it is fun to show like, since it's not going to be a startup that we're creating. <laughs> Th that's true. Um, so let's do five of these and then let's just go every other. We'll get its value. So this one will be two. 
This one will be three, four, and five. And what does this look like? Okay, so we're getting closer. I need to add some, we need to add some styles here because this is yeah. getting a little too, for now, I guess let's. Uh... That's awesome though. I didn't, I hope that they make that extensible to all browsers quite soon. Okay, so this doesn't quite work, but it, it works pretty well. Um, we need an on change for this. And so on change. I don't remember how to do this. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to have to set tastiness. And it would just be set tastiness to like event target value. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Let's try. We gonna find out. Oh my goodness. That is beautiful. Okay. So now what we can do is we can send this vote to, um, we can send this vote to a database, which means we need a database. And so for that, we are going to use Hasura. Um, and so Hasura, well, actually let's, Let's maybe get the the clicking through working first and we can store all of the, the results mm -hmm. and then we'll submit all the results at once. So, okay. So that means we probably need, this is where I'm now I'm kind of wondering if we need like something more than just use state, but we can, we can do like a um, score or we can do like responses and we'll do set responses. And that can be used state like an array. And then down here we'll have uh next. Okay, so we'll we'll save and rate the next taco. Mm -hmm. Good. And then when we click that, we're going to need an on submit. And this is going to need like logic. So, because we're going to have to like, when you're, when you still have tacos left in the list, we need to update the, okay, so let's, let's write this down. Handle submit. I wonder if we should actually have, like, can you, in the default state, can you reference another state value? Like, if we have active taco index, mm -hmm. can we use that inside of the active taco? Like, do we need, you know what I mean? Because I think we actually should keep the index so we can check whether or not we're, we've reached the end. Yeah, yeah. So what we should... Hmm. Yeah, maybe we do want um, maybe we do want the index because then we could be like yeah, if I the think index that's is better. there. Okay, okay. Yeah. So let's keep an index, and then what we can do down here is tacos active taco, and then we'll change all of these. Okay, so uh, then what we, oh, what we probably also need is like a hidden input. Well, no, we don't because we can grab that out of the state. So when we save our taco, we need to um, save the current taco ID and its rating. Then we need to check if this is the last Last taco. If not, show the next taco. If so, save the response to database. I'm going to say DB so I don't have to spell database. Um, <laughs> okay. So we can save these in responses. So I think the 
first thing that we would get is um, we would do like set responses and then we would have the current responses and we can do like um, no wait it needs to be an array so we could return an array with the current responses and then set a new one with an ID of why can't we just push it? Oh yeah, because we're not mutating it directly. Gotcha. Yeah, we. It's. I think yeah, yeah, it has yeah. to be immutable. I think um, so. So then it would be tacos active taco. Dot ID. And tastiness. We can just store directly. Cool. Right. Yes. And then. It would be if tacos dot last index is that the right thing? Um, no, it'll be uh, active taco is equal to uh, what? Where's the array? Tacos. Yeah, tacos dot length minus one. Okay, then. No, blow up. <laughs> <laughs> She's awful. So if it is, then here. Nice. For science. No, for bragging rights. <laughs> okay, so uh, so if we get there, if not, then we would set active taco to be active taco plus one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so I think that that meets our goals. And we just see if it works right now. Yeah, I think this will let us actually like advance through. Oh, we should also reset the um, input. Yes, you're to right. Zero. Set tastiness or to middle to three. Yeah. Okay, and we added this to on submit. Yes. Okay, so let's give this a try. So this taco, uh, I get to run the control, so I get to make the choices right now. Oh no. Of course. Oh, we need to we need to prevent default. Yeah. Prevent default. Okay, let's try this one more time. So here, save. No. <laughs> we need to style this. Yeah. Uh, that one, actually, that one does, kind of does look good. Absolutely not. No. <clears throat> Yes, I would die for this taco. <laughs> I'm definitely getting tacos for lunch. Okay, so I broke something. Oh, it didn't. Oh. We probably have a uh, an invalid index. We probably have our check incorrect. Yeah, you're probably right. So maybe. So it's still trying to render even after we're done. Oh, we didn't return. Silly cotton-headed cotton-headed ninny muggins. Um, so that should actually work. So if I just go through and do a quick yes, so that that actually did the thing. Let's. I'm realizing now we probably should let's let's style this so that it's faster to click through. Um, so what do you like? What do you think we should do with this? Style-wise, yeah, we need to make all these photos the same width and height, and give them like <laughs> absolute positioning so they're not jumping around. Yes. Um, yeah. Let's do the height of those. 
going to add these responses in so we can see them. So in the app.css, what did we call this container? We called it current vote. So let's go down here and we'll style up current vote. So I think with that, we can maybe see if we need to do anything with that. But let's do a current vote image. And you said we want to give them a width of and we set those ones to 800. All right, let's make them a little bit smaller. We'll get high DPI out of that. Um, and then for height, you said, what do you like three by four? Do you think like a 300? Did you freeze? Oh no, Emma is frozen. Um, and then I'm gonna try something. Cover. I've offended her so deeply that she's gone now. Look at that go. Okay, so this is like my favorite CSS property when you don't control the images. You can object fit cover. I hope she's coming back. The cats like finally took vengeance and just went for her. Um, <laughs> There she is. Yeah, Zoom Zoom is out to get us. Uh, we will get her back in in just a moment. There she comes. Oh, you can do it. Come on, little compooper. Indeed. You know what I love is when <laughs> Zoom decides that it needs to update and quits the app. <laughs> like just mid stream Yeah, good. Yeah, it was like Zoom has an update. You have to restart. It's like you didn't even give me a choice. Anyway. Restarting in two minutes. Um, that I mean, that does make me really productive, though, when that sort of thing happens. <laughs> and get rid of this spacer now that we're doing a little bit of styling. And so, yeah, check that out. Okay, so um, what I did was I used object fit cover to like mm -hmm. force an aspect ratio without breaking everything. Yep. Looks good. Excellent. Oh, I'm happy. Um, and then would I love think, to get the the text breaking onto new lines. Whoa, hold on. We missed one. Yeah, uh, someone said we had an off by one error. We do have an off by one error. And what is it? Um, oh, because our, because our, our, wait. If our active taco. Oh, equals, maybe. Maybe remove the minus one. Yeah, because it would be we we actually want the last one, so cool. it's it's when we get to the one after the last one that we would want to update. Yeah. Okay. So maybe one. Oh no, hush. Uh, so one more quick thing we should probably do is just style these up a little bit. So let's do it right in the browser. Let's box. Oh, you want to do Flexbox? All right, talk me through Flexbox. Um, okay, so around the content, like the um, form. Oh, wait, just set it on the form. So form, you're going to want a display flex and flex direction column. Nice, nice. And then, uh, Ooh, that input field though. I so I wrapped it with the label. Um, so I can I can probably ah. pull it out actually because I realized I also made an accessibility error, which yeah. is I I did an HTML four, and then I didn't actually give this oh <laughs> an ID. But now that it has an ID, if we pull it out of the label, yeah. it's still connected uh, because of this HTML four. And the ID. Yeah, 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 for sure. And now these work. So cool. we've got our, our form, display flex, flex direction column. I We might want to add, I don't know if a line item center or justify content center is going to like allow, okay. I guess center aligning is possibly the best just because, yeah, nice. That's good enough. I, yeah, I think for, you know, for this particular use case, we're going to be okay. I'm just giving us some breathing room so that you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that actually came out just Not a little bit. Of, that is what five lines of CSS and just made this look about a thousand times better. And then if we go to the button, 
We can add a little bit of button styles. We'll go like uh, margin top. Wow, come on, spell. Give it a little bit of breathing room and then we can make it like background. Um, so Salmon. what's your favorite? Salmon, okay. Oh, that's awful. Cool, love it. <laughs> Give it some padding. Let's add a nice little uh, transition on there. Ooh, okay. Well, you're gonna probably have to pull that out of the editor. Like uh, pull it out of DevTools and put it into the okay. editor at this okay. point. Cause... So here's another fun trick. Once you've written styles in the browser, if you click this inspector style sheet, It'll show you everything that oh you've written. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? That's so awesome. So that you can copy paste it right into your app. Copy pasta. I love copy pasta. It's my favorite kind of pasta. Nice. Okay. Um, so can now, you also let's check to make sure that black text is accessible on that salmon background? We can do that right in Chrome as well. Yup. Okay. So um, to do that. I think you click the color, right? Yeah, we just have to, I think we have to actually click the color. Oh, gotcha. And then contrast. Is look at that. Is that right? But if we set it to white, it's definitely yeah. not going to be double A, triple A. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Glad we sorted that one. Excellent. Okay. Cool. So, well, cool. so then go, you go back in a style sheet real quick. Let's add a. So this is CSS. So on button hover and button focus. Let's do a transform scale. Transform scale. Let's do like 1.1 maybe. Okay. And then on the button element, just add transition transform. I think it's transform. Maybe it's scale, You're but right. we'll find out. And then do we want to give it like uh, We'll a do like 0.2 seconds. See how that looks. Noise. Noise. <laughs> Okay. She jiggly. All right. That's fun. Um, cool. So so now we have like, oops, uh-oh, uh-oh. Not read. Just try that again. Click, 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 click. Where's our yeah, last? It's, like, it's the last case, I think. So um, I think it's still probably trying to set... Well, we have eight. Are seven being rendered or eight? What is up with our indexing? I'm not sure. Let me pull this off to the side. The minus one was correct. The mi but the minus one couldn't have been correct because we were missing one. Right? Unless I, did I just absolutely miss this? One, I think two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And so that would be index eight. We're initializing at zero. So where it should. So if active taco is seven, that's our last one. And tacos dot length is eight. So less than or equal to, wait. Yeah, so this this should cause uh, when it's seven. No, we need a negative one on there, minus one. But didn't that, wasn't that what caused us to be missing one? Um, I don't think Two, so. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then we're still missing a, a thing. Why? That's so weird. How? Where are you? Oh. oh, it's because of this. We have like a we have like a race condition where oh, okay. this is being set. But okay, so to beat that, we need yeah, to yeah. We need to move it under the the if statement. No. Oh wait, no. I think we have no. to do something like this. And then we can do responses. And then we'll just set the responses to new responses. Because really, because if we need this, then we're going to need. Oh, I got you. OK. That way we beat the race condition by just having the object copied. Um, there's probably a can more like. Can you explain what that is for my sake, but also for people listening who have no yes. idea? So when. React runs a, a use state update. It the state is not immediately consistent everywhere, which means that because we declared responses and set responses, 
um, when we run the set responses, we can't guarantee that responses will be updated to this value when this code runs. So that means that we would need to do, we need to do something more. Um, we need like a use effect that watch the responses value or, or something like that. Um, this solves the same problem because we get the new value. What this wouldn't solve is if this were to randomly fail, which I mean, if that randomly fails, we've got much bigger problems because that's that's something that I don't even think it's theoretically possible uh, in the, the React code base for this call to fail. Um, but this keeps it consistent. Um, and that way we can we can work on that updated value, even if we don't have the absolute latest and greatest from use state. This absolutely will get us into trouble in a more complex app though. So don't like, I would not ship this to production, this this like copy of a copy here. You would wanna rely on the React lifecycle to make sure that you don't end up like one version of responses here, one version of responses there, and and they're not quite consistent except when they are, and then you know it you'll you'll be sad. <laughs> but since we only have one one component that is doing one thing, this is an acceptable workaround. Um, but you know, your mileage may vary. I think it's database time now. I think it is. Let me let me run this one more time to make sure we get all eight, and I'm going to change some of them. So there's all eight, and it's storing them as a score as a uh, string. So let's fix that. We want we want the values to be numbers. So what if I just change these? Oh, you can't. Oh, can you? I don't know if you can do that. Can you? Let's find out, because that would be the easiest solution. Yeah, that's true. No, that doesn't work. No, so instead, cap. yeah. Instead, we got to go in. We'll just parse int. And then now we should see that first one's five is an integer. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. That means that we can um, we can go in here. We've already got the ID and we've got a tastiness score. So we're we're gonna do a pretty inefficient database thing where we're just gonna store these like in the database and uh, and not stress about being really efficient. Um, and we're going to do that because we are, we've got 30 minutes left and I want to make sure that we get it done. So I'm going to log in. This is the first time I'm actually making a full stack app. I'm, like, I'm very excited. Ever? No, not ever. I mean, I took database in college and stuff and I did all of those, but in isolation, I've never fully put one together. <laughs> yeah. These, and this is hopefully, uh, Taco choices. Um, so what we've done is I've logged in at cloud.hasura.io and I've clicked new project. Uh, I'm going to use their free tier, which means that I'm going to be in the US re East region. They have a bunch, but this is the only one on the free tier. Um, when I continue to the database setup, I have this option to try with Heroku. And Heroku, uh, I'm already logged into my Heroku account. If you're not, they'll take you over to, to log in. They automatically provision a Postgres database for you so that you don't have to think about it. And now, Ta-da! We have a taco what type choices. Of database is Postgres. Postgres is a it's a, a flavor of SQL. Oh, okay. Um, so if you've ever used MySQL, like you've built a, a WordPress site or something, it's the database interaction really would look small. very similar. Fortunately, we don't have to think about it at all because there's no SQL required to use Hasura. There's you only get into SQL if you want to do something really advanced. Instead, what we're going to use is a uh, UI. <laughs> And GraphQL, yeah. Um, and so it's it's going to be really, really pleasant. So now that we've got this, I'm going to just set a quick admin secret um, so that the chat doesn't hack the crap out of us, because they always do. <laughs> and now that we've got that, I'm going you to... You hackers, you you dirty hackers. That Yes, that's you, chat. You, you are the hackers. 
Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this data tab. Oh, thank goodness. It was a little laggy yesterday and it, it is snappy as hell today. So that's good news. Um, so we're going to call this taco votes. Um, and we'll give it a column of ID. This is going to be an integer and we'll just not auto incremented. Um, and then we need actually. Nah, maybe we shouldn't auto increment that though. Just it might be buggy. So what, so yeah, I'm, what I'm worried about, we need a primary key, something that is actually not going to be the taco. So mm -hmm. this is going to be not the thing. We're going to instead use a taco ID. Oh, okay, That'll cool. be an integer. And then we'll need the tastiness score. And that will also be an integer. And I feel like, you know what we're missing though, is a Boolean to indicate if it's Taco Bell or not, because how else are we going to be able to tell like, Oh yeah. We would we have completely lost the plot here. We forgot that the whole point of this episode was to troll each other. Ah. Trying to be useful out here. Jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll go add a, a flag for is Taco Bell. So now when I click this, um what we will be able to do is go over to graphical. And so now what we can do is we'll be able to insert new taco votes. And if we can insert like this, we'll be able to, um, to, no, not update, insert. Insert taco votes. And the objects is an array. So we can do um, is Taco Bell, taco ID, and tastiness score. And we can do this as um, an array like this. And that means that, so our taco ID would be like zero, tastiness score would be three, um, and is Taco Bell is false. Good. So then we'll get something back and our returning would be like, whatever, we can just get back uh, how many how many rows were affected and turn off returning altogether. So then we'll find we'll see we, we created one taco vote row. Uh, and if I go over to data and look at this taco votes, we can see now we've got one vote. Uh, so I'm going to trash oh, that one. Oh, because you actually ran that mutation. I, I did, you. yeah. So that is uh, that is everything that we're going to need. We'll just call this add taco vote so it's easy for us to figure out what's going on. And now mm -hmm. let's set this up to actually run. Um, so I guess the first thing we need to do is add this is taco bell flag. So do we need to add any dependencies for this? We're going to add one, which will be node fetch. Okay. Um, so let me just copy paste that mutation real quick before I lose it. And then I'm going to yeah. copy paste this. This one is. And these three are. And then this one's not. I'm glad we caught that or we would have like completely defeated the purpose of it. Wouldn't that have been heartbreaking? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so then the other thing that we're going to need is the uh, so will be tacos active taco and then we can do the taco ID And is Taco Bell will be Taco is Taco Bell. OK, so now we should actually get the, the full object that we need. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to send these off. So what I am going to do is um, I'm going to just get this set up for um, Netlify mm -hmm. functions because we're because we're writing to a database, we need to have some kind of protection of the database uh, keys, because we need that admin key in order to write to this database. And we don't want anybody to be able to write to our database from anywhere, which means that we can't just put this in our client code, or else somebody could like open up the, the source view or figure out how we write to our database and just completely skew the results, um, which you know we, we're, we don't want to do bad science here. Um, 
I'm oh, going to warn you, I just got a notification saying Zoom will quit in 15 minutes. No option to like delay that. Zoom will quit in 15. Great. Okay, good. So this is what I've learned that during this live stream is that Zoom is horrific in terms of, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's blocking our fun right now. Anyway. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, oh wait, this is a Tommel. So we're going to set this up as build and our published directory. Where does, where does this build to when we actually build it? I'm going to find out. Let's run yarn build. I think it's going to go to like dist. It goes to build. So the publish folder is build. The command is yarn build. And our functions are going to live in a folder called functions. And that should be everything we need to get this set up. I'm also going to npm, or I guess yarn add node fetch since we're using yarn. Then I can create functions and add, or let's do, just do like Sura add response. And in here we can get fetch, which will be require node fetch. And then we're going to export a handler. So every serverless function needs a handler. Um, in, in this is like the AWS flavor of serverless. So uh, in AWS or Netlify, you're going to use handler like this. Other, other serverless flavors will do it slightly differently. Um, and then you're going to get an event. Um, there's other stuff you get, but we're only going to deal with that today. So what I want to get out is the responses, which will be in the event body, but they are stringified. So we're going to event body, JSON parse that to get it out as a JavaScript object we can use. And then we need to send this off to Hasura. So to send off to Hasura, we need a few things. Um, first, I'm just going to copy paste a little helper file that I have that makes this a little bit easier. So let's go to learn with JSON, learn. I'm working on a new version of my site and I just added in some some Hasura stuff. So mm. this will make our lives a little bit easier. And what this function does is um, if we do it this way, actually, let's just do it this way. We'll get it. We'll get it out like this. Um, we're going to send a fetch request off to our Hasura URL, which we need to uh, grab as an environment variable. Then we've got our Hasura admin secret, which uh, we set in the cloud dashboard. And then we can send off our query and our variables. So our query is going to be that mutation that we wrote. And our variables are going to be uh, the responses. So the responses, if we take a look at these again, are, let's refresh and, and run a new one of these now that we've got the is Taco Bell flag in there. So we've got ID, tastiness and is Taco Bell is true. Um, so the challenge that we have is that this ID is not actually the um, taco ID, which is what we'll need in the database, which means that we're going to have to map this. So let's grab that mutation. And this we can almost drop right in. The, the main difference is we're going to turn this into a variable. So mm -hmm. if um, an easy way to do that is to come over here and look at our tacos and we can just hit that variable button and it becomes objects and we can see here that it like tells us what it needs to be hmm. when it did all that stuff for us that's cool so i'm going to copy this out and put this right at the top here and i'm going to make it required instead of making it optional which is what hasura did by default so then our objects are going to go here. And that means that our variables need to include objects because it maps these to these. And that needs to be an array. So we're going to get our responses dot map. And for each response, we're going to return um, a taco ID, which will be the response ID. And then we are going to return the, um, I guess we can just do like the rest of it. 
actually we can't because it's gonna that would override our ID. So instead, we're going to include. Well, can't you just spread response first and then overwrite that one? What we, oh, it I has see to be unset. Saying. Yeah, so we'd have to like delete it or something. So instead, we'll just we'll do it the long way. Um, can we so just we rename do... it in our? I mean, we could just rename it. How, wait, you can rename keys in an object? No, I mean like in our where we instantiated all of our like our data. Can't we change ID to taco ID in our actual object definitions? That would, I mean, you could, I guess. <laughs> no, that's that's a much better idea. <laughs> okay, so let's fix that. Um, here we go. We've got our IDs. Do, 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 do. You're being very annoying. I missed one. So there's our taco ID. And then down here, we need taco ID and taco ID. Do we use dot ID anywhere else? I thought we did. For the key, no? Oh, we don't map anymore. Yeah, we're not mapping anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try, let's just verify that one more time, make sure it does what we want. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Taco ID. Tastiness is Taco Bell. Perfect. Okay. That's what we need to send in. So now that will be significantly easier to handle um, because we can just drop this directly in. And that means that when we, whatever we get back, we're going to just get back the number of affected rows. I kind of don't care about that. So as long as we don't get an error, I'm just going to return a status code of 200 and a body of OK. And we're going to be fine with that. Um, yeah, we've got 18 minutes. I'm not going to I'm not going to tempt fate by trying to get really fancy with this. So once we have that, I'm going to initialize this for work with Netlify. So we've got our site here. Um, I'm going to get add everything. Yeah. Good. I'm going to get commit. And do we need to say, add like the URL and the? We we do, but it um, I'm going to set it up as an environment variable. And okay. in order to do that, I could put it in a local .env file, but I'm going to I'm going to set it up on Netlify instead because oh. that way we can deploy it. Cool. Um, so let's see. Almost ready to judge Emma's taco choices, and then we can. I already create this one, GitHub repo create, and we can copy paste this. Make it public. Yes. Good. Then we're going to get push, set the upstream so I don't have to keep typing this origin main. And then I'm going to Netlify init. And we want to create and configure a new site. We'll put it on my team. Um, we're going to call this, we need to talk about your choices. Good. Leave that default, go build. Good. So now I can Netlify open and it should, it's going to open the wrong window. Oh, it opened the right window. Look at that. Okay. So now I can go into my settings and my build and deploy environment. And I'm going to add mm -hmm. environment variables. So it's those so environment variables, it's, it's so much nicer than an end file. So I'm going to copy this one and this one. And thanks to Sarah Drasner, I have. That's amazing. So nice. Um, so I can just type in here and not have to worry about you hackers stealing all my secrets. Okay, and so the, the GraphQL URL is here. So you can just grab that right out of your, it's under the graphical tab right at the top. Um, and so I've just pasted that in here. So I'm gonna save. And now that I've done that, check this out. I can do Netlify dev. And it pulled those environment variables from Netlify. So now if I was working on a team, my team members would be able to run Netlify dev as well and they would get those environment variables. So we don't have to like DM each other and stuff like that. It's it's really nice. 
Oops, I have it running in two places. So let's close this one. And let's run it again. Da -da -da. Okay. So now that this is running, we can call this, um, this function with our response value. So if we go back out here to this one, um, I think I can just... I think you can just do this. Does that work? <laughs> it sure does. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so now what I can do is I'm going to open like Postman. You could use curl. You could use whatever you wanted. But because this is running locally, I can actually test this function by sending real data to Hasura. Um, and so this is a nice way to do it. So I'm going to go to HTTP localhost 8888. And it's always going to be at .netlify slash functions unless you specifically set up a redirect. Uh, but then we call this Hasura add response, I think. Hasura add response, yes. And then I can send as a body. We'll go with raw, JSON. And I'm going to paste this in here. And I think that might might work or it might explode. We'll find out. So I'm just going to pass in. Nope, I need more. We needed to call this responses, I think. Yes, because it's looking for responses. Mm. So we'll call this responses. And then here. Let's see if that just works. I think it might explode because it's not. Oh, no, this is valid JSON because we're not sending any strings or anything. So I just need to make that valid. Yes. OK, here we go. We got a 500 error. Mm. Field tastiness not found in insert input. Tastiness. Oh, no, we named it something different, didn't we? Tastiness score. Oh, oh shoot. Frustrating. OK. This is what this is what I get for trying to be. <sighs> okay, so our tastiness is going to be tastiness. Score is tastiness. Good. Let's try that one more time. Boop 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 boop. Okay. So now I can go back and let's get all of these out of here. Now we've got a tastiness score. So if I send this, we got a 200 OK. And that should mean that if I go back to Hasura and I look at our data, look at that. We've got votes. So nice. now I am just pleased as punch because we can set this up to actually run. So what we would do now is we would say um, new responses. We'll make this one async so that we can make it wait for stuff. And we will await fetch Netlify functions Hasura add response. And we're going to send it as a post request. And the body is going to be um, Jace or wait. We're going to JSON stringify responses, but we're going to set that to new responses so that it's the right value. And so then what we should see here is that if I go in and I actually complete this. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. We'll, we'll set a couple of these. And we'll just move them around, get some different scores. OK, so we don't have like an end state. Um, but what we can do then is we can go and look at this. We'll run the query. And now we have more scores. So this works. This is, this is actually functional. And that means that we can deploy it. And the chat can start actually voting on tacos.
What did I do? Oh, crap. So pushing that change, and this should build pretty quickly. And while we're waiting for it to build, let's get the uh, chat for the link. Oh no, Emma, she's back. <laughs> Just constantly betrayed by Zoom. This is, I, I'm over it. <laughs> so we're getting a, a link for the chat to go and vote on these because we are just about in business here. There we go. It's live. So chat, go and vote on tacos. And we've got nine minutes, so we probably don't have time to actually show how we would pull this in. Um, but actually, this this could make a really fun follow up where maybe we will do a um, a graph that we can show sure. where like once you oh, once you crap. finish voting, we can pull in those results and show you a, a score of like whether or not people are fans of Taco Bell. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. Like I'm really glad that we got this running. I that worked. Uh, so that, yeah, I mean, and that's like, Chad, that's really what you're after, right? Is like, we, we were able to really quickly, 33 people are voting a oh, lot, heck. <laughs> getting a lot of, a lot of taco votes here. So we're going to have really good scientific data. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so Emma, uh, are you down to come back? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot in public, but do you want to build like a, a, display our results we we have to give the people what they want which is <laughs> what do you to watch think, me sit here like what is happening <laughs> um ooh, jay spenson has a good point we we should add like a thanks page so if we get to the last taco so this would update our active taco here to tacos length is greater than one then what we could also do is we could set like is done, set is done, and we'll do use state false. Mm -hmm. And then if you get here, we will, after you finish, we will, and actually let's do it before. Set is done to true. And if you are done, what we can do is change this out And we'll do like a marquee. Does that still work? Yeah, make it a marquee. That's awesome. Okay, so we can, uh, oh, and let's, yeah, we'll put this in a div. Oh my god. Someone put a marquee in your chat. Wait, does that work? Yes. Oh my god, my chat overlay parses HTML. That is terrifying. Nobody <laughs> abuse that, please. That's the best thing we've ever figured out. Oh no, that is bad news. Um, <laughs> this is going to go so poorly. Uh, okay, but for real though, like, don't do anything bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we can do some results and then let's just, we can, uh, really quickly style this up a tad. Um, and while we're doing this, Emma, where should people go if they want to learn more about you? You about hackers, you, you dirty hackers. <laughs> or about tacos. Um, I mean, you can definitely find me crap posting on Twitter, um, <laughs> but I'm really trying to share more on Instagram. So like, follow me on there. Cause like, is it the same? Yeah, it's private though. I make everyone, you know why I privated it? Not because I care, but because sometimes my friends will follow me and I won't, I'll miss it. 
So if I have to like accept everyone, I can see who's fault. Like, and then I don't miss my friends. So I gotcha. Like, I gotcha. I, yeah. I think I still technically have an Instagram somewhere. You do. Like, I tagged you in one of my stories. Oh, I've. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. Okay. So um, <laughs> okay, that's atrocious. I'm gonna I'm going to commit this. My favorite commit message. Dear Lord, the chat is trying to hack Twitch now. Stop hacking, chat. It's Oh no. I don't think colors will work. I think I fixed that. Um the the site used for resizing images is squoosh.app. Uh this will all be in the show notes as well if you're if you're not familiar. Um on that note, I think I'm going to start tearing us down. So, one more quick shout out to uh White Coat Captioning and Vanessa who's been helping us out all day. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to to be here and caption the show. That's made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, Hasura, Fauna, and Auth0, all of whom pitch in to make the show more accessible to more people, which we very much appreciate. Make sure that you also go and check out the schedule because we've got a lot of really fun stuff coming up. We're going to learn Minecraft next week and not like how to program in Minecraft. Just literally, I'm going to play the game Minecraft for the first time on stream with Lindsay, who is like a Minecraft speedrunner. So it's going to be very ridiculous and very funny and i'm gonna dig myself into a hole quite literally uh then jay is gonna come on and we're going to do a uh a kind of a really interesting interactive svg animation i think he's got some plans for using like voice oh you broke my whole stream you hackers get out yeah. um i'm so mad at all of you uh no what is that okay all right okay you're i Jeez. what is this what is this? We're just going to refresh you that. hackers, you, you, you dirty hackers. Did it even work? You're all on timeout. That's that's how I feel about this right now. You know, you're Did never you going to have a solid my... stream again now. Yeah, because they set display none. What? I got you. You're all the worst. That's how I feel about you right now. Oh God! What is okay? You know what? Just stop. Just stop. You're all, you're all done. Um, <laughs> I was, you know, I was gonna teach you stuff, and now I'm just over it. I'm just over it. You you're all, hackers! You you dirty hackers! You're all on timeout. That's how I, mean, I feel. I feel like that's a Twitch like security flaw. It is, well, it's it's a me security flaw. I wrote this this chat box. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The, oh, the, the overlay is just a website. So I didn't I I never would have expected that my chat was so full of monsters that I would have to protect <laughs> my chat box against XSS attacks. <sighs> well, now that I've been thoroughly betrayed, uh, Emma, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us. Chat, thank you for being terrible as always. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Uh, Vanessa, thank you for doing captioning today. Um, you're all, <laughs> you're all terrible and wonderful, and I treasure every minute. Stay tuned. We're gonna raid Emma. Thank you again, and I'm gonna I'm gonna end this before we both drown. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.